guys, I want to just tell you that I, um, I, I just feel like the Holy Spirit is just letting me some good stuff. I believe that, that, did you get the calling post today? Yes, it was Did you excellent. hear what I said about the wind of God? I don't normally share visions I have like that open, usually I don't. But today I just felt like I was supposed to, but I want to show you what it looked like. Can I show you what it looked like as it is as I'm on look? The wind was like just doing like this. The swirling, that's the word that just came to just swirling all around. And I said, Lord, I mean, it was blowing. I could see it moving things. And going to, I said, Lord, what does this mean? Why are you showing me this? And the Lord said that he was sending the wind of the Holy Spirit. But what's significant about this thing is he said, I'm going to touch every, there will not be anybody untouched. This generation was going to be touched. And I'm not, when I say this generation, that's all of us. We're all this generation that's going to be here for the coming of the Lord. And so when I saw that in the spirit, I was like, wow, Jesus, wow. And then when I was looking at those verses of scripture, and the one that I quoted was in Amos. And where it says the Lord is the one who shakes the mountains and stirs up the winds and reveals his thoughts to mankind. He causes the clouds to rise over the whole earth, and he sends lightning with the rain, and I love this, and releases his the wind from his storehouse the storehouse of heaven he releases his wind but i love it. i love that scripture but look i'm going to read one more can i read one more we got time for me to read one more when it goes on down here it says he for the lord is the one this is amos the one i used this morning was psalm 135 this is amos 4 13. for the lord is the one who shapes the mountains stirs up the winds reveals his thoughts to mankind he turns the light of dawn into darkness and treads on the heights of the earth. But then this is the key. It's the Lord God of heaven's army. That's his name. It's the Lord that speaks these things into existence. And he reveals and opens up his treasure to those who saints. And the spirit of God, I'm telling you, I believe in the last days that we're going to see. I don't know what's going to happen with the election. I'm not even concerned about it anymore. We've already prayed. Yes. God is sovereign. He yes. had a plan from the, yes. before the foundation of That's earth. Right. He knew what was going to take place. Right. Whoever goes in will be God will allow it. That's but right. this is what I know. That regardless of who's our president, I believe we're in the last days. I believe we're going to have a last days movement. And people say, yeah, but what if? Look, I do believe. One, this is what I want you to hear. No matter what spiritual... Uh, spirits of darkness rise up in these last days. It doesn't matter. They're going to rise up regardless of who's in his president because it's the end times and the devil knows his time is short. But no matter who goes in, what I do know that evil may be pushing in here, but the spirit of God, there is going to be a last day's revival. There's going to be a last day awakening because God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants all to come to into forget, forgiveness of sin. He wants them to come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ None that none perish is what he says. So I believe that we're going to have a last day's revival. But I believe I believe the believers that call themselves believers, the church that's been dead, is being awakened. And as they're being awakened, I'm going to tell you something. Without prayer, a prayerless church is a decaying church. We've been praying on these grounds now for a little over a month, and it's significant because of what happened this past weekend with the outreach. We we set the table. But it can't, our job's not over. I mean, I know we're only going to meet next week. We'll be the last week on the grounds. But then come January, we'll be meeting, uh, unless we want to call a day before the end of the year, uh, in the church on Tuesdays. But I believe that our position, you know, the Lord told Jehoshaphat when he, when he inquired of the Lord, he said, you know, what shall we do? And I love that scripture. He said, get in your position and stand. And you're going to see God fight the battle. Yeah. There's a lot of battles that might take place, yeah. spiritual battles. Yeah. But you know what? I'm not alarmed at that because I know the God that I serve. He is the Lord God Almighty. Yes. He's, yes. Uh, uh, that scripture said, the, the Lord of the heaven's armies. Yes. So he's with us and he's moving. And I just greatly believe. I want to pray over you right now. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for that it brings life yes. to our spirits. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that that scripture specifically says that you are going to release your, the wind of your spirit. 
and it's coming from your storehouse, your treasury of heaven to us as believers. You are releasing the wind of your spirit. I pray that over us as believers, over our church home, God, over our families, our friends, every place that we touch, God, the spirit of God be released upon us and those that we know and love and are concerned about, Lord, that, that there will be an, a great awakening of believers, but also, God, the prodigals, we call them home today. We say the prodigals are coming back into the saving knowledge of Jesus. They're coming home. They're coming home. We're declaring today, Lord, that there's going to be restoration, God, and healing take place in the hearts of those, Lord, that our families and our friends that have been uh, bound and chained, Lord, in darkness. Lord, our addictions, they're going to be set free. We thank you today, God. It's all happening because your wind is blowing. And we lift up today the ones that are under this tent. We lift up a praise to you today. We say, oh, God, you are worthy of our praise. And we exalt your name for who you are. And we are so thankful for the spirit of God that is moving throughout this nation. Even as we speak, even as we're standing here in the gap today, Lord, that you are moving by your spirit. And revival fires are burning. And we thank you, God, for the great harvest that is coming into the kingdom oh let it be so lord let us be a part of it let us lord be so awakened by your spirit that we don't miss anything that you're doing god but we're in tune with what the spirit is doing we're hearing what the spirit is saying and i thank you for it lord i thank you for moving in our church I thank you, Lord Jesus, that any strategy of the enemy, we call it null and void by the power of the name of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb. Anything the enemy has tried to, to place, Lord, put in place that is against the will of God, we say it's null and void and we declare victory over it right now in Jesus' name. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus and the protection of the power of the name and blood of Jesus. I thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And no weapon that we, the enemy will try to form against us, it cannot prosper. And against the plan of God, give us vision, God. Give us the plan. Give us the strategy, Lord, to further the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And no weapon will form against us. Anything that tries to form it won't prosper. Because you said, God, anything that will rise up against us, or that you would condemn and that is our inheritance as the saints of God and we claim that inheritance today God that Lord the, the vision and the purpose for this church will go unhindered so the kingdom Lord can be built and we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in your precious name Lord amen amen come on Pauline let's pray praise the Lord praise you Lord Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For your worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, Lord, I worship you. you praise. I give you glory and honor and praise, Lord, because you're so worthy. their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Yeah. Lord, we, your people, are standing here today and we humble ourselves before you, Lord, and we seek only your face, Lord. Yes. 
we have sinned against you, O oh Lord, and you alone. Lord, we turn to you for forgiveness. Yes. Forgive us, Lord. Do not turn your face from us. Oh, yes, Jesus. Your word says in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 9, that you will not turn your face from us if we return to you. Yes. Thank you. Lord, we turn to you. Yes, we do. Lord. Have mercy on us, Father. We cry out to you for forgiveness. Yes. Father God, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, your word said that if we confess our sins yes. to you, that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Lord, we have sinned greatly. We have committed shameful things, Lord. We have killed our babies. We have called wrong right and right wrong. We have oppressed the weak and removed the boundaries. We have not kept your statutes and your ordinance. We no longer walk in your ways, but the way of the wicked. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord, from everything that defiles our bodies and spirit. Make us holy before you, Lord. Father God, I am so grateful that you are not slack concerning your promises. As some count slackness, but your long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. We repent, Lord. We repent, Lord. Father, this sin revival, Lord, we are living in a dry and thirsty land. Psalms 85 verse 6 says, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Let us rejoice in you. Let your face shine upon us, O oh Lord. Father, your word says in Isaiah 57 verse 15, that you will revive the spirit of the humble and the heart of the contrite ones. Sin revival, Lord. We are, we draw nigh to you, Lord. Draw nigh to us, Lord. Sin revival, Lord. Father, first king, verse chapter 18, 21, verse 21 says, And Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer? Will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. Father, we are not silent. We are not wavering. We know that you are God and we are following you, O oh Lord. Send me by the Lord that your people may rejoice again. Habakkuk chapter three, verse two. Lord, I have heard the news about you and I'm amazed at what you have done, Lord. Do great things once again in our time. Make those things happen again in our own days. We say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do great things once again in our land. Pour out a great power that many will come, O oh Lord, to the saving knowledge of salvation through Jesus Christ. Do it, Lord. Do it once again, Lord. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not oh Lord God we are calling you send a revival Lord that will reveal great and mighty things in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus amen and amen Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. It's my privilege to pray for pastors and leaders. And you know, we have a, a changing culture today. 
So the role of pastors and leaders, it can be quite challenging. So I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that according to Psalm 34, verse 15, your eyes are on the pastors and the leaders, and that your ears, Father God, are attentive to their prayers. I thank you, Lord, for blessing the church with the capable and dedicated leaders. And I thank you, Lord, for all the sacrifices that they're making and doing the work of your church and in the community. I ask you, Father God, to bless them abundantly for all their hard work and their sacrifices. And I thank you, Father God, that all of their needs are met in Christ Jesus. Your word says in Proverbs 29, 18, that where there is no vision, the people perish. So I pray, Lord, that you would continue to give the pastors and leaders a clear picture, yes. Father God, of what your That's vision right. is, Father yes. God, for the church, for the body, yes. and for the community, and that it would be coming straight from the throne room of heaven, downloaded into them, Father, and then carried out to the land. I thank you, Lord, for showing them the way, Father God, for giving them the guidance and the direction that they will need in order to fill fulfill your will, your plan, and your purpose uh, uh, for that vision. I pray, Father God, that they will have ears to hear and all to hear your voice and only your voice and that telling them what direction they need to go in and what they should do. We know that the enemy is going to attempt to try to distract them from studying, Father God, your word, from praying to you, Lord, and from seeking your face so that they can get the answers that they need to fulfill your vision. So I pray that you help them, Father God, to have their minds fixed and focused yes. and stayed on you, that their eyes will be yes. like glory, Father God, that they will not look to the right or to the left, but they'll look to you and only to you. I pray, Father God, that the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth would be upon their minds, Father God, upon their ears and upon their eyes. And I say, and that the, the Satan is bound and will not be able to penetrate through there. So he will not be able them to uh, hinder them from hearing from you, Father God, I pray. I pray Ephesians 619 over our pastors. I pray that whenever they open their mouth, Father God, that your words will be given to them and that they will be able to make it fearlessly and very boldly yes, it will come Jesus forth, said, Father God, that they will not uh, try to yeah. hold back or yeah. try to yeah. compromise yeah. or uh, maybe be afraid yeah. of offending yes. someone or losing yeah. church yeah. attendance or tithe, yeah. but they yeah. will uh, firmly yeah. stand on your word yeah. and speak it out forth yeah. like a sword coming yeah. out of their yeah. mouth. But again, Father God, tempered Whoa. with words of love. I pray, Father God, and thank you that according to Isaiah 11 verses 2 and 3 that the spirit of the Lord will rest on them Father God with the spirit of wisdom and of understanding the spirit of counsel and of power the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and that Lord Jesus you will give them the wisdom for the many decisions that they will have to make that each and every day Father God that you would equip them mentally spirit, spiritually and physically so that they could deal with with whatever issues that they have to deal with that day and in the days ahead. I pray, Father God, that they would have singleness of mind, Father God, and that they'll be able to make good, clear, sound decisions and choices. I thank you, Father God, for watching over the lives of our pastors and leaders and their families. I thank you for protecting them and their families from the hand of the enemy, that according to Psalm 127, verse 7 and 8, that you, Lord Jesus, will keep them from all harm. That you will watch over their life. That you, Lord, will watch over their coming and going, both now and forevermore. I thank you for your angels, your mighty, mighty angels that will be encamped around and about them and watch over them and keep them in all their ways. And that goodness and mercy will follow them all the days of their life and that your blood, the ever, all oh, the never-ending blood of the Lord Jesus Christ will be upon 
them morning, noon, night, whether they sleep or whether they rise, your blood is upon them, protecting yes. them as they go and come. And I pray that the pastors and leaders, according to Galatians 6, 9, will, um, will not become weary and well-doing, but in that due season, they will reap if they faint not. Uh, if, according to 1 Chronicles 16, 11, I pray that they will look to you, yes. Lord Jesus, in your strength, and that they would seek your face always. So I thank you, Lord, for strengthening them and helping them according to Isaiah 41, verse 10. And I thank you, Father God, that as spirit of revival and refreshing yes, is going to come upon yes, them, that it yes. will fall double yes, and triple and four Jesus. times as much Hallelujah. upon them, Father God, that it will start with them and it will trickle you, down Jesus. to all the body of Christ. Yes, and I pray that we will all stand in anticipation, waiting. Yes, I pray that there'll be no hindrances. I pray, Father God, that the people will stand behind the pastors and leaders and will welcome this refreshing and this new revival fire that you will send to touch our land and our community. And I end, Father God, with your blessing, which I love so much. And Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 and 26, I claim it over our pastors and our leaders that, yes, Lord, so. you would bless them, Hallelujah. Father God, that yes, you wow. would keep them, Father God, yes. that you would make your face shine yes, upon them, so. and that you Please would be so. gracious Hallelujah. to them, Father God, Glory and that you God. would turn your face yes. toward them, Father God, and you would grant them peace. I yes. praise you and I thank you, and I ask it all in the mighty name, the name that is above yes. every name, that at the Amen. name of Jesus yes. Christ, and yes. every knee will yes. bow, and every tongue will confess yes. that Jesus Christ is Lord, right. to the glory of God the Father. Yes. And I am proud to Lord. say that I am a child, a joint heir of the Most High God. I worship you, Father God. I praise you and I thank you. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just intercede for a moment. If you will, just so that I can leave you on the side of the key that it is in the soul. We lift up the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we bind every attack in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of the enemy shall flee in the name of Jesus. Father, the God of angel armies, send yours to your people. Father, we lift up your name. I'm going to pray for healing. We've heard it a million times before, so we're going to hear it another million times. The reasons why the saints and the people of God should expect them to receive healing. I've been studying from this book a little bit. My grandfather gave me the healing and atonement. Kenneth Hagin read did some some old old words from there. Goes back through the Bible very piece by piece and really helped me understand why we ask versus just hearing it, you know. And um, so that's going through this. Number one. Because God used to heal the sick as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord is our healer. And the word says the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jehovah Rapha continues to, to, to still heal today. Number two, because Christ died on the cross to atone for our sicknesses as well as for our sins. Number three, sickness being a result of Satan's work and even the sin of the world. And with Christ's purpose coming is to destroy the works of the devil so we can, we can expect to receive that. Number four, because of the same Holy Spirit in the church today, that with all of Christ's miracles, the miracles for Paul, etc. If this is still the same spirit, why should we not expect him to bring healing the same way for us? Number five, the Great Commission's uh, the Great Commission in Mark 16, and also because of his direct command in James 5, in Mark 16, he says, And these signs shall follow them that believe, literally meaning to those believe, literally meaning to those who believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, shall they speak with new tongues. Shall they take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. James 5 says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. 
and the prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. Six. It says, and now we come to the, to the last one. Christian states expect God to heal their bodies because of his marvelous promises, but in the fulfillment of which depends altogether upon the exercise of our own faith. Matthew 18, 19. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth, as touching anything that I sh they shall ask, it shall be done for them from my Father in heaven. Matthew 22, and in all things, whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Mark 11, and Jesus sa answered, answering saith unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall, shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and thou cast into the sea, and shall and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, and shall whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall receive them. God gave us a spirit of expectation, and if he is the same God yesterday, today, yes. and forever, then we shall receive these things. Hallelujah. The last one, there's a lot of scripture here, the last one I wrote down in John 15, 7. It says, let the Holy Ghost control you in thought, word, and deed. You shall ask, and what you will shall be done unto you. I'm pretty sure all of us will healing over our body. None of us want to see loved ones sick. None of us want to see the leaders of, of, of the church body sick. And we can, we're coming together right now based on his word. That's the right. word has been written. That's right. We're coming and we're binding sickness in the name of Jesus. Father, we come together more than more than two or three of us and we're standing in line with your will because of your written word. And Father, we declare healing over the sick and over the body of Christ over the minds of the body of Christ, over the bodies and the spirits, Father. That the spiritual sicknesses such as apathy, being lost, rebellion, Father, those things shall bow and shall be given unto you and you shall restore. Physical illnesses, Father, that have affected the mind or confusion and doubt and fear and anxious thoughts that the enemy has brought in shall bow at the feet of Jesus because your word said that you would bring about healing and through, and through our exercise of faith, together in unity as the body of Christ, we declare healing in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for every single sickness right now. I rebuke it and bind it in the name of Jesus, and I cast it at your feet. There will be no cancer that stands against you, Father. There will be no dementia, no Parkinson's that stands against you, Father. There will be no joint issues, no gastrointestinal issues, and no muscle issues that stand against you, Father. Every single sickness shall bow at the feet of Jesus because the blood has already overcome it all. Father, every family that has struggled, every individual that has struggled, every bit of confusion and doubt that has been planted, I rebuke it. I dig it up and I cast it out in the name of Jesus. I throw it in the fire and I plead the blood of Jesus against it right now. Your people will flourish and receive favor and power because we're going forward and we are building the kingdom and we will not be held stagnant. We will not go backwards. The enemy has no place here. I rebuke it and I claim healing for our children, for our grandchildren, for our grandparents and for our parents. Father, we will see these things through as you have promised. And we declare them by the word of the Lord, by faith, and by the word of our testimony. We will see it. It shall come to pass in Jesus' name. And it will go forth and you will be glorified. And people will become to know you because of what you have done and who you are doing it through. We declare these things and you will receive the power, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. And devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You get your hand off of this people. You get yourself off of this lot. And you get yourself off of our homes. I plead the blood over every household here, every vehicle here, and over bla and every over every blade of grass on this lot in the name of Jesus. Father, this is your kingdom. This is your body. You and you alone stand here, Father. We receive healing, we receive power, and we receive authority in the name of Jesus. We will not bow. We glorify your name. We honor you in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the healer, the victor. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to pray.
for the election of the nation and our president. God knows what he's doing. He's still in the game. That's right. He hasn't changed. That's right. And I struggled with some of this, wondering after being here for a while. I can only say that I stand amazed. I stand amazed at what he's doing. I want to start off with the Lord's Prayer as we pray for this election. Because it says, Our Father, yes. our Father, yes. we're claiming relationship. Yes. Who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on this earth where yes. we live right now yes. as it is in heaven, yes. where your government and your will is firmly established and does not change. And give us this day our daily bread father we are so yes. grateful for yesterday's yes. bread we thank you for yes. what you did yesterday yes. but lord for today's bread we have a hunger yes and we have an appetite yes. Hallelujah. some would say i'm so tired of hearing second chronicles 7 14 but lord that's because they don't have an appetite they're not hungry you gave them bread yesterday and they sat down they didn't go to work they didn't do what you asked them to do, what That's you called right. them to do, so they're not hungry today. But this group, yes. this church, yes. we cry out and we say, yes. Father, yes. we need fresh bread yes. for today. Yes. We're hungry. Yes. We have an appetite. Yes. We've been doing your work. Yes. We cannot continue to do your work if you do not give us fresh right. bread yes. for today. And we ask that you forgive us our debts yes. as we choose to forgive yes. all of our debtors. Yes. And lead us not into temptation, yes. but deliver us from evil. For once again, yes. thine is the kingdom yes. and the glory yes. Thank you. and the power forever. Yes. So, Father, on this election day, Father, the first thing we do is we pray for peace. Yes. Yes. We ask for peace. Yes. Lord, you said, let us love one another. You said they would know us by our love. Lord, the airways are so filled with hate right now. But Lord, we declare your peace and we declare your love. And Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bind unrest in the name of Jesus. We cast it down and we put it under our feet in the yes. mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, bring your light. Yes. We ask that you expose corruption. We ask that you protect the innocent. We ask that you protect those that go after corruption, Lord God. Father, we ask that the light of the Holy Spirit reveal and expose the hearts of men in power and those that are going after power. Holy Spirit, bring your conviction to our entire land during this election period. Bring that desire of peace that you have. Bring that desire of justice that you have. Your desire and your longing for the act of loving people. Let that flood your church, Lord God. Give us a loving spirit. Whether or not we agree on all things, we are to love. We are commanded to love. Make us that people that you strongly want us to be. Father, we pray against division. We pray against deception. We pray against hate and anger. And we say, peace be still to the storms that would rage against civility in our nation. Father, we pray against strife and confusion in the name of Jesus. And we ask for unity on this election day. Unity in the body of Christ. Only you, Lord God, can make this happen. It's an impossibility in the natural. But Lord, we don't look to the natural. We look to the God that is above and beyond. We look to the God that creates. We ask you, Lord God, to bring that unity. Father, let the love of Christ prevail throughout this day. For Christ is the head of the church. Let his people, the hands and the feet, demonstrate this love in our actions and in our speech. Words that only lift up and do not tear down. Open our eyes and our hearts, we pray, that your will would be done and your kingdom would be established on this election day. Father, for our nation, 
Lord, I go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13. You said, when I shut up the heavens or command locusts, you didn't say if, because you know the condition of man. You said when, because you made a way, you made provision. Yeah. yeah. You knew that when it happened, you could say when this, then if you will do this, I can restore things. Yeah. So, Father, we thank you for that. Even in Job, he said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Yeah. Blessed yeah. be the name of the Lord. Yeah. In all this, Job sinned yeah. not, yeah. nor char charged God foolishly. Yeah. Lord God, we recognize your sovereignty. Yes, we do. Yes. But Lord, we know we have personally experienced your love and your yeah. mercy. So, Lord God, have mercy on our nation. Yes. Father, open the eyes of the lost to see your love. And your grace extended towards them. Fathers, Moses cried out for his people. We cry out for America. Yes. Lord, hold on judgment on America. Extend your grace and your mercy, Lord God. Let the church be the church and rise up to show Jesus to the lost. Yes. God, open America's ears to hear your voice calling out to them. We rebuke the devourer in Jesus' name yes. and say, you cannot have our country. That's right. Jesus. Psalms 33 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Rescue our country, O oh God, from the assault of the enemy. We plead your blood, Jesus, over the airwaves of our nation. We plead your blood over the land of our nation. We plead your blood over the cities, the counties, and states of our nation. We plead your blood oh, yes. over every elected official, right, the Jesus. sheriffs, the mayors, the commissioners. We plead your blood over governors. We plead your blood over congressmen, senators, and appointees. Yes. We plead your blood over judges and attorney generals in the mighty name of Jesus. Break every chain yes. that binds them, that binds their hearts, that binds their minds, that would cloud their judgment. We break those chains in the name and in the blood of Jesus. And Father, for the president that is president today, we pray protection over our president. We pray protection over our president that is the president today and tomorrow and next week and next year. Yes. Whatever the name is, Father, your people pray protection over that president. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our president. Father, I, I'm amazed how the blood has just been spoken all day today. Lord, you are indeed God and you are in control. We pray that your angels would surround the president and go before him. Father, we call out wisdom. We call out to wisdom and we say wisdom. Fill the decision-making process for our president. Let him use wisdom in his decision making and in the selection of people and use wisdom in the voices that he chooses to listen, listen to. Let him make wise choices in foreign affairs and foreign policies and all agreements that are made on behalf of the United States. Father, let him make wise choices over our economy, over the jobs market and over policies affecting U.S. lives. God, we pray for discernment. Yes. Let him discern the intent. Yes. Let him discern the hearts yes. around him. Let him recognize good from evil. And Father, let him recognize good from best in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for strength, yes. renewed like the eagles. Eagles, We pray for eyes to see and ears to hear. Let him see like Jesus and let him hear like Jesus. When Jesus walked into a town, he had eyes that saw the hurting. He has eyes that saw the poor. He had eyes to see the children, but he had eyes to see the Pharisees. He had eyes to see those that only wanted the power and had no heart for the people. Give him ears to hear, Lord. He heard the cry of the man that said, Son of David, yes. have mercy on me. But he also heard the voices that plotted against him in the background. Most of all, Lord God, give him a heart tender towards Holy Spirit. Let him hear the gentlest whisper. Let him hear the tug. It says, come away and I will give you strategy. Come away and I will give you ideas. Father, bless his health and his rest. Bless him with ideas and strategies. 
We speak favor over all his ideas and decisions and favor with all people. We speak peace to his mind, clarity and focus of thought. Let the mind of Christ be in our president today, tomorrow, and next year. Fill him with love and compassion, yet uncompromising. Let him be uncompromising in the safety and security of our nation. Haggai chapter 2. Says this. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place... I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you for your gracious, gracious provision. Lord, we had no way to imagine that you would put the resources in our hand this simply and so many. <coughs> and God, that, that you would set us up where people are watching to see what we're going to do next. And Lord, they'll be able to benefit from the love of this church fellowship. God, I thank you for the volunteer spirit that you put back in our people. God, you resurrected it Saturday night in a big, big way. And we're so grateful. So Lord, help us to dream big enough. And help us, Lord, to not just dream, but to walk it out. And God, I'm praying that people won't just feel good, but that there will be a harvest of souls. Yes. That people will understand that the God of creation met their need through believers that love Him. Paul wrote to the Philippians, and he said that he was convinced. He said, my God shall provide all, provide all of your need according to his riches and glory. And he was talking to people that had just met his need. So Lord, we know it's a scriptural principle that as we meet needs, our needs will be met. He even went on farther in, 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 down in that chapter. He said, right now, our needs are being met. So uh, you know, your needs, are, your needs are met, so you're blessing, and one day you'll be in need, and somebody that is not in need will bless you, and that way it'll be equal. God, that's your equality, and so we thank you for it. Thank you for letting us be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen.